In this video, I'm going to show you how to install Hacks inside your Home Assistant setup. Hacks is an abbreviation for the Home Assistant Community Store. It's like yet another add-on store or app store that you can use to get integrations into your Home Assistant. Home Assistant has a ton of integrations available already out of the box, but they're usually only available for your more popular smart home devices, such as the Google Nest or for Hue light bulbs, for example. If you're trying to integrate a more obscure type of smart device into your Home Assistant, you may find that it doesn't work out of the box. This is where Hacks comes in. It provides a way for developers in the community to write integrations for these lesser known smart devices and provide them to your Home Assistant community via an easy to use add-on store. That's where Hacks comes in. And I'm gonna show you how you can install and configure it in this video. Let's take a look. Hey Home Automation Guy, start the show. The first step to installing Hacks is to enable SSH access to your Home Assistant instance. You can do this via the add-on store by searching for the official SSH add-on. SSH is a secure way of accessing Home Assistant remotely. If you can't find SSH in your Home Add-on store, it means you don't have an advanced mode enabled in your user profile. So click on your user profile in the bottom left and enable advanced mode here. This gives you access to more things that are only used by advanced users. Searching for SSH now, you can see that we have the terminal and SSH add-on available. Let's go install that. Before we can use this add-on, we need to configure it through the configuration tab. The only thing you really need to set here is the password. So give yourself a nice secure password, type it in here, and that's what you'll use to remotely log on to Home Assistant. I suggest toggling the option which shows this add-on in the sidebar, making it easy to get to in future. You now have SSH access to your Home Assistant, which means you can do a lot of advanced things. One of which will be to install Hacks. The easiest way to SSH into your Home Assistant instance is to use the terminal window on the left hand side nav that we created earlier. To install Hacks, what you need to do is go to the Hacks website, which is hacks.xyz, and follow the links to the installation instructions. Here, what we're going to do is copy this installation script from the page and paste it into our terminal window. This will download Hacks and install it inside the back end of your Home Assistant. Just paste it in there, press enter, and it's pretty quick to get installed. At this point, I'd highly recommend restarting Home Assistant to give you a clean, fresh slate to start on. This process is going to happen a lot, so get used to it. I recommend checking the configuration anytime you restart Home Assistant, just to make sure that you haven't messed anything up, which means that it won't restart properly. So we'll click restart and wait for it to load up again. The next step is to clear your browser cache or cache, depending on where you are. This step is super important and a lot of people skip it because it seems kind of stupid. You really need to do this. The instructions I'm showing on screen are for Chrome. Follow whatever instructions you need for your specific type of browser, but it's really important that you clear those cached files. If you don't do this, you're not going to be able to see hacks in the next step that we're going to do now, which is add the integration into Home Assistant itself. To do that, go to the integration section and click add integration. You should now see the hacks one available. If you don't see it here, you'll need to clear the cache again. Wait for it to install, and now a scary set of instructions come up. The reason that these are here is because hacks is for advanced configurations and you can install all kinds of different add-ons and repositories from around the internet that haven't been tested by Home Assistant. If you break something by installing one of these, Home Assistant is simply saying here that it's not their fault and it's probably something you installed off the internet that hasn't been properly tested. The first one agrees that you know how to access the log files, which I'm going to show you here. Click on the configuration area and then click logs. This will show you when any of your Home Assistant add-ons, including ones installed by Hacks, are having trouble doing anything. This is where you can troubleshoot what's going on and understand where you might need to focus your energies to fix those problems. You can now tick the box that says you know how to access the Home Assistant logs. The rest of the tick boxes here are just for you to acknowledge and for Home Assistant to tell you that anything that happens in Hacks is not the responsibility of Home Assistant, that the things that are installed via Hacks 
haven't been tested by the home assistant community and they're not guaranteed to work and they may inadvertently end up breaking your home assistant installation. Personally, I think this is a risk that I'm willing to take because the benefits that I get from using hacks integrations far outweigh the risks associated with potentially breaking my home assistant setup. You should always take backups before you install anything. And if you wanna know how to take backups, take a look at one of the videos I've listed in the description. The developers for Home Assistant have tied it very, very closely to GitHub. GitHub is an open source software repository storage area thing that developers use to collaborate together to provide open source software and different pieces of code. This is where Hacks gets the information from for these types of integrations. The repositories that you can install via Hacks are, live in GitHub, and this is where the developers work together to make them better. So in order to use Hacks, you will need a GitHub account so that you can connect to these repositories and download them into your Home Assistant. If you don't have a GitHub account, I'll show you how you can create one during the installation process. Make note of the code that's displayed on the screen here, because you're going to need it to link your Hacks installation to your GitHub account. If you don't have a GitHub account, you can create one by clicking on the link here. Type in your code and click continue, which will link your GitHub account to your Hacks installation. You now have Hacks installed and you've unlocked a huge amount of integrations that you otherwise wouldn't have had access to. The two icons on the top right of the Hacks card show you that this is a custom integration and not tested by Home Assistant and requires internet access to work. Hacks is accessible through the left-hand navigation menu. And you can see here there are two types of things that can be installed using Hacks. The first is an integration. This is very similar to a Home Assistant integration that you see in the configuration area, except this is usually written by someone in the community who wants to connect some sort of smart thing that they have in their house into their Home Assistant, but hasn't actually got native support for. People in the community create these in a loving way and share it with the community so others can get access from them too. The second is a front-end component, and these are things like themes, custom cards, or other elements that make controlling or looking at Home Assistant easier, and I'll take you through both of these now. The first one we'll install is an integration, and it's very similar to installing a normal Home Assistant integration, where you can search from a list and pick what the device is that you're trying to connect. You can see here there are dozens and dozens, possibly even hundreds, of different kinds of integrations for different types of smart things. Here I'm going to pick the Orbit Beehive watering system, something that isn't supported by default by Home Assistant, but someone has written an integration for. You can see it's very similar to another integration um, provided by Home Assistant natively. There's a configuration area. It explains what kind of entities and sensors are available from this integration, and any switches that you have or other bits and bobs that you can use to control whatever it is that you're installing the integration for. Every integration will be different, so it's important to read these notes to understand how it works and what it can provide for you. You just click the install button and it will start installing that integration into your Home Assistant. Your new integration will be available in the Hacks integration area, but it won't work until you restart Home Assistant. You should be getting used to this by now. So Home Assistant has restarted, and you can now go back into Hacks and finish configuring the integration you just installed. So we'll click on the three dot menu for the integration and go to the information area. We'll go back to those configuration instructions. In this case, we need to make an update to the configuration.yaml file. So we'll copy the config we need to install in there. And if you've previously installed the file editor plugin or add-on, you'll be able to directly edit that file within Home Assistant. If you type a hash in front of the text, it will mean that it's a comment. So you'll be able to see what exactly each little thing is for. It's useful to comment every area so that you know what different sections are for. For this particular integration, we need to type in the username and password we use to access our Beehive system. We then save the configuration file and you guessed it, restart Home Assistant. Once it's been restarted, that integration will be available and you'll be able to control how you water your plants in Home Assistant itself. 
We'll now use hacks to install a front end component. Front end components are things that you look at visually in the Lovelace dashboards. There's a lot of different cards available for different types of displays of information. For example, different weather cards, clock cards, different ways of charting information, different ways of turning on and off buttons, specific types of cards for specific types of integrations, and also themes. This changes the color scheme and the look and feel of Home Assistant. One of my favorite themes is the midnight theme. It's a dark, clean theme, and I'm gonna install it now. You can click on what you want to install and get that information the same as you do for an integration. Here we can see some screenshots of what the theme looks like and all of the other cards and such have different sort of visual appearances that you can look at and understand what works best for the use case you're trying to do. Once again, we just need to click install to get it into our system. Just like integrations, you may need to configure some of the components that you install this way. The information area will usually have installation and configuration instructions. For this one, we once again need to add something to our configuration.yaml file. In this case, importing the directory that the themes are installed on, making them available for use in our front end. Let's copy that configuration bit. Once again, go into the file editor and paste it into our configuration area. I'm once again going to provide a comment so that when I come back to look at my configuration file, especially as it grows larger and larger, that I know what each little bit is referring to. This helps me troubleshoot and understand what I can safely delete and what I might need to pay more attention to. And because I made a change to the configuration.yaml file, you guessed it, time to restart Home Assistant. With Home Assistant restarted, we can go back to our Lovelace dashboard and edit that. When we go to the little pencil icon, we will now see our theme available, and by selecting it, you'll see that it really changes the look and feel of that Home Assistant dashboard. There are tons of add-ons and themes out there, so you can really customize Home Assistant to get exactly what you need out of it. The integrations I've shown you, which are from the hacks list, are the official unofficial add-ons and integrations. You can also use hacks to install unofficial, unofficial add-ons. These are usually hobby projects that developers are working on on the side, but they still provide value to other members of the community, so they put them up on GitHub for other people to be able to install via hacks, even though they're not available directly within the hacks list of integrations themselves. Let's take a look at how to install one of those. This is an integration that shows you how the tides are, whether they're rising, falling, how high or low the tides are in the UK, and it happens to be written by my brother. You can find instructions on how to install add-ons via hacks on the GitHub README files. Usually it involves copying the GitHub repository link and then going into hacks, into the integrations area, and clicking the three dot menu or the kebab menu in the top right hand side. Click the custom repositories button and paste in the URL of the GitHub repository you copied earlier. Now select the category for the type of integration you're installing and click the add button. This will load this repository into your hacks locally. We then click the install button on the newly added repository and it will install that integration into your local hacks area. Once again, we need to restart Home Assistant. But we're not done yet. We've only now just made the integration available in Home Assistant and we still need to configure it just like all the other ones. We'll once again go to the information page and take a look at how it needs to be configured. You can see for this particular integration, you can either configure it using the UI through the normal Home Assistant configuration area or through the YAML file. Let's do it the easy way and use the user interface. So we'll go to configuration, integrations and click add integration. We should now see the UK HO integration available, which we didn't have before. Now that it's installed, it still needs to be configured before you can use it. Every type of integration will be configured in a different way, depending on what services it talks to or what it's trying to do. So follow the instructions from the GitHub repository or the information area inside the hacks integration screen. Once it's been correctly configured, you'll be able to use it within Home Assistant to do whatever it's been designed to do. 
whether it's turning off your irrigation system when it starts raining, or understand if it's going to be high tide or low tide out the front of your waterside apartment when you get home from work. So you can see that Hacks provides a way to make an already powerful, customizable home automation platform like Home Assistant even more powerful and customization. It enables people all around the world to create integrations to less popular, more obscure types of home de automation devices and smart devices. It also works for very regional things like bin collection times for a specific region or city. You can create an add-on that connects to a governmental API and downloads information or information from a very obscure type of API that only certain people might be interested in. It allows people who are interested in this to gather together in this community to contribute back into these repositories and make them better for other people within that niche that may want that information in their home automation system. If you're looking for more videos about how to use Home Assistant to make your home automations more powerful and more customizable, why don't you subscribe to my channel? And together, we can make your home smarter.